Hello everyone, my name is OxyM17 and today is the day we just downloaded the Planet Zoo South America Pack DLC and I am so excited to look at all the new scenery pieces, all the new animals, all the new habitats and things we're allowed to put in the actual exhibit. We also got a free update today that uh, made a lot of in-game changes as well as added a few more scenery and enrichment items totally for free, so I'm super excited to experiment with that. We are going to build over here. <clears throat> We're going to completely open this area up and then see what we can do over here with the South America stuff. Doesn't look like we have any new barriers, so we'll go into habitat. Actually, we'll go into animals. Oh my god, guys, animals, hello. Reset all filters. We are going to look for an animal that I was super excited for. I think I mentioned it in the last video, the giant anteater. Oh, I cannot wait. This is going to be so cool. Uh... Sure, somebody's pet, that sucks. We'll buy you, and we'll buy you. Okay, we'll go into Zoopedia, and we will find the giant anteater. Because given that they have been in the game for about maybe 12 hours, I have no idea what they need. They are vulnerable, their habitat is South America and North America, grassland and tropical. Okay. So, nature, we'll go to filters, continent, North America, South Central America, Biome is they said grassland and tropical, right? Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. Hold on. Toggle purchased DLC. Oh my god, hang on. Is this must be part of the new uh part of the new update here? Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this. All these mossy roots. This is gonna be so nice. Strangler fig tree. Oh yeah, that's brand new for sure. Switch cheese isn't new, that's not new. Ipe tree is not new. Wimba. I don't know if that's new. Maybe I think that's new. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh my goodness, that is so exciting. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's such a cute little tree. Oh, you guys, Brazil nut tree. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Nothing in rocks because we have continent settings turned on. South Central America, North America, tropical grassland. Let's make sure that we are good here with the anteaters. They are North America, South America, and then grassland and tropical. Just want to double check species data. Uh, they are about one to two, which is good because we bought a breeding pair. <coughs> Uh, research stats, interspecies enrichment, so they can live with tapirs and uh, capuchin monkeys. Oh, okay. Oh man, you guys. We could really go big on this exhibit. We really could. So let's find a good place to build it. Like I said, we're going to work on that probably over here a little bit. I do want to go to barriers and just get the animals in. So we will also search giant anteater. Oh, look at all these new items. Natural termite mound, hell yes. Habitat bedding, oh, we have leaf bedding now. Yes, you guys, it's a big day. I am so excited. We'll also go here and we will filter for theme South America. That's all we're putting in for the theme. Oh, look at how cool these structures look, you guys. Look at how cool they look. Oh, we've got all sorts of stands and things. We've got bins, we've got benches. All oh, these tables look gorgeous, by the way. Oh my god, I swear, I could fangirl over this all day. Theme, South America. I'm sorry, the first few minutes are just going to be me fangirling. What? Bamboo walls? Ah! Oh my god, you guys, I cannot wait to mess around with this on a much more detailed level. Look at that, we've also got pre-made buildings that we can put to view animals. The, uh, the temple, that's going to look super nice. Oh, we have all these pre-made temples. Look at this! Oh, we're so going to do something with this. There's no way we don't. <clears throat> Look at this. We get all these red temple painted walls here. Oh my god. Rope coils. All of this stuff just seems so random, and I love it. Oh my god. I love that wall, though. Gold? Hello? Yes. All right, I'm into it. I'm here for it. Wall light, wall light, lamp post. Oh, it's got fire too. It's got torches and just, oh, so nice. Okay, let's stop fangirling. Let's focus on habitat. Let's make an exhibit for our giant anteaters. What do we want to make it out of? I'm kind of thinking South American looks, I would almost say wood logs would probably look, not look too bad. Yeah, but we got to find a way to get it so it looks good because we can't curve wood logs. So we will we'll extend that right over there. 
and then maybe we'll put a different kind of or a different kind of wall around the back. I don't just want to make a square habitat. I want to see what more we can do with that. So maybe we will go into brick, perhaps. Oh, I wish there was a way that we could make this look better. I no, I don't like this. I like the the front facing. I like that as a front facing thing, but I don't love. Oh, I'll delete that. <coughs> So I like the idea of that, like front facing, whatever, maybe go all over here. And can we stick a one-way glass window in there? Yeah, go to settings and then, nope. So when you have a one-way glass window like this, you can select the entire thing and you can uh, go right to left and basically switch the orientation of the glass. So now your guests can see through, your animals cannot. All right, cool, cool, cool. We have to find something to work on. So obviously we're gonna go here into terrain tools. We're gonna do a little bit of sculpting, maybe pull some stuff around around the back. I know it seems like a theme for this zoo that we're kind of just doing like mountains only. I mean, they're ant eaters. I don't think they need a ton of space. We'll probably just end up doing null barriers around the back here. I just want to get a little bit of a skeleton of what this is gonna look like. <clears throat> I'd like to see if we could maybe add some temple architecture here. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you up front, if you've already made it through these first uh, 10 minutes or however long it's been, I apologize in advance. I have no idea how long I'm going to fangirl over this stuff for. I'm very excited. Nope. So, flat surface. We'll definitely throw some rocks and things there because we all we do have new mossy rocks I'm excited to check out as well. So, this is looking like it's going to be our anteater enclosure. They don't swim, so I'm not super worried about that. We will go into barriers, and can we stick a wooden habitat gate, like, somewhere off to the side, like back here? Yeah, let's do that. Let's put it back here. Let's do exactly what we did with the other enclosure, and we'll stick the habitat here, and we will decrease the size a bit. There we go. Wooden habitat gate. Just rotate yourself around like so. And boop, there you go. Now you have your side habitat gate right there. Don't add a new one. We just want to lower that down a bit. I don't think we're going to do the whole crazy big adjustment. We're probably just going to do rocks and temple walls and see what we can do with that. Um, so we are going to go into nature really quick and we're going to turn the continent filters off and we're going to look at these new rocks. Yes! Mossy rocks. This is what we're going to use like crazy. Dynamic mossy rock? Hello? What does that mean? Oh my god, is the moss changing wherever we put it? So we've got one mossy rock that'll look mossy no matter what, right? So that's our mossy rock 30. And then we'll go up here and it changes with location. Oh, that is so cool. That is a fantastic new feature. I was not expecting that. So we're going to go in and we're just going to see what we can place around the edge to make this look make this look pretty nice, Look, make it look like, you know, water has been running over it. Because I feel like that's more often than not when I see mosses in the water. I could be wrong, I do see it in forests and things like that. So if somebody knows more about moss, uh, please let me know in the comments down below because I love to learn about literally anything. We'll rotate that a bit, and then we'll go here and we'll drop it down. I don't love how that sticks out, but that's okay. We're not going to stress over it. We don't want to. We don't want to take you guys for too long, and we already know that this is going to be a long video to begin with. Might be a two-parter, but no promises. Okay, so we're building up <coughs> some of this architecture here with the. With the rocks, we got a nice $20 rock. Maybe we can move that piece over here. This is so cool. I really was not expecting such, like, I don't know, awesome detailed stuff. I'm kind of at a loss for words right now. That how just intrigued and fascinated I am with the stuff they've done so far. This is very cool. These dynamic rocks are definitely a big hit for me. They didn't look exactly how I thought they were going to look. I thought they were going to be a little bit darker green, but I am very happy with what we got. Oh, Lord. This looks... That's a huge rock. 
Actually, that could work out pretty nice. We just slide that right down there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Not bad. Not bad. All right, so we have their kind of scuffed skeleton of an exhibit right now. Pull some of that up just a little bit more. So I wouldn't think a hat, an anteater can escape from that. We've got rocks right there. Now let's look at their terrain. I have no idea what they're going to want. So honestly, I might just move them in here <clears throat> and then work on it from there because they're a brand new animal. I have no experience with these things, obviously. They just came out today. So I'm thinking that's what we're going to have to do. All right. Does that sound like a plan? Cool. Oh, here they are. Nice. Oh, you're gorgeous. Okay. Your habitat is actually not too bad. Hard shelter is absolute zero. Terrain is not terrible. Uh, everything else is good. So let's go to terrain. You're fine with long grass. You don't have short grass, funny enough. Would not have expected the animal to like short grass so much. So pretty much because these things are more jungly animals, I would assume they like longer grass. Although I'm not entirely sure how much that plays into any uh, exhibit, really. Any any jungle with grass length. Because there's not really grass in the jungle. I don't know what I'm saying. Words are hard, you guys. They do need soil, and they can have a lot of soil too, which is going to be super cool. So we will put some dirt, sprinkle that all around here. Put some hard soil, put some of that in as well. Go light soil again. Sprinkle some short grass. Yeah. And we'll go along here to light soil. Kind of move that along the back wall. Or do we want to do heavy soil? Nah, I like light soil along the back wall. That looks much better for this back wall. And then we are going to add some more. Um, oh, that's all heavy soil. Am dumb. Or is it light soil? Yeah, it is. No, we're good. We're not that dumb. Now they want little to no rock in their enclosure. We're going to add a little bit more short grass in because they have quite a bit of dirt. That should be good for that. And in terms of trees, they can have unlimited <coughs> they can have unlimited coverage. I don't know why Zoopedia says they are, live in North America as well because it just says here they live in South and Central America. So we'll throw some rocks in. These awesome dynamic moss rocks. How they're in terms of space? Calculating, oh yeah, 2.8K at a 780. Or yeah, as it should be 780, that's way better. Again, we don't want to go too crazy with rocks. We just want to place a couple of them in the exhibit so they look kind of cool. Some rocks sticking out, I like it. We can really fill the heck out of their exhibit. And we're gonna do that once we have everything in. So for giant ant eaters, do we have any South America themed housing? Beds and shelters? I don't know. Do we? Africa shelter, South American shelter? That's huge. I don't know if that's going to be enough space. We'll see this one and see if it's enough space because I really like this hut. This little hut they get to sleep in. Where can we put that? Over here? Kind of like off to the side? Perfect. Alright, so the hut is good enough and you know that we just have to put these awesome new bedding pieces down. Giant, typing, giant, A, giant anteater, as in shelters, we're going to do leaves. Oh man, I might only do leaves in some animals exhibits from now on. <clears throat> I'm super excited about this. Make sure it's not running under the null barrier. It is not perfect. Heaters and coolers, our temperature is good. So we'll stick a forage box right over here. Obviously, we'll stick a couple of these natural termite mounds throughout the, uh, throughout the exhibit. And we'll put some toy enrichment uh, back there. I just like when they play with the big soccer balls. I think that's super fun. And then we will go into food and water. They eat out of large food bowls. Put one right there. And we'll put a water dish right there. The reason I'm putting these here is so that the animals can get close to guests to see things. I'm not sure what their relationship with humans is yet. But when we find that out, we'll know better if you should move them or not. So, we will go into continent, South Central America, 
and we're just gonna go crazy. Oh man, look at these things. We're rotating our plants and our rocks. We're gonna put some simple stuff over here. Toss a couple of these coconut palms in. So South America, for those of you who don't know, obviously is home to the, I think it's the world's largest rainforest, uh, the Amazon. And it is, the Amazon is large. Wow, it's big. It takes up like pretty much all of Brazil and other South American countries. Oh, <clears throat> my apologies. So, oh, can we stick that? No, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look great, it doesn't look too bad. My, my original point with that was that you have a lot of um, foliage biodiversity throughout the uh, throughout the jungle, which is pretty awesome. Ooh, we got new big trees. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Are these strangler figs? Is that what they're called? That's such a cool name for a tree. I like that's actually kind of hanging out. Oh my god, wait, wait, wait. We can put the roots all over. So that's awesome that we can put these roots all in the ground like this. That's a neat little feature I didn't know I wanted to have in the game, but now that I have it, I adore it. We can definitely play more with that uh, in other builds for sure. Monkey-faced orchid flowers? Okay. Umbu tree? Look at that pudgy little thing. That's fantastic. So once again, because these anteaters allow for 100% coverage, we can pretty much put trees all over the enclosure and not worry about them getting salty. That's the uh, nice thing about jungle animals, that they really don't mind how many trees there are. Bromiad plant large. So is small just like a few of them then? Yeah, broken yellow ipe tree. I like the broken tree look because I mean, trees break in the jungle. What are you gonna do? I know these aren't new. These have been in the game for a while, probably since release. They're not terribly expensive to feed either. Grade three food for two of them is under six hundred dollars, so they could be early game animals because they don't seem very difficult to take care of. That big thump when we put it down. Nice. All right. Current coverage is sixty-eight percent. We can keep. We can keep making that a little bit bigger. We'll add some yellows to the mix as well. We did switch a line to surface on for some stuff. We'll see how that kind of changes the game a little bit. I don't want a ton of yellows. I feel like it looks a little strange in the middle of a forest. Or the middle of a jungle, rather, but that's just my personal opinion. Let's keep looking for plants. Plants, 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 plants. So this is cool because we can look at it like from the canopy here and just see what needs to be put where. You know, like what sort of coverage needs to be filled. Another umbo tree. I like the placement of that tree right there, for sure. Demiard Wimba.
I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is good. This is about covered. You know? Got some variance in the terrain. Let's see what you think. If you're hungry, you'll eat. It's fine. 74%. That's about three quarters of the way full right there for for animal plant coverage. Everything else, terrain is looking good. You have more than enough space. We did drop it by about uh, 200 meters by putting all the plants in, but again, they're fine. Other than a little bit of hunger, which again, will be sated when the animal actually eats. We're, uh, we're looking pretty good here. They've got full enrichment. They have a ton of food and toys. So this is looking good for the ant eaters. Now, I think it's time we make it look good for the guests, or at least try our best. So I was looking at some of these paths earlier, and I think the horizontal path is one I'm going to like the most. So we'll put that one right along. We're not going to put it at 5 meters. Let's see if we can put it at 3. Alright, well, let's go to angle snap. So that would be straight, and then 1, 2, 3, okay. That would be straight. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, I kind of like this nice circular U shape we've got going on right here. We can definitely do something fun with this. Because, yep, yeah, that does look even, right? It looks a little off. I don't know why it looks off, but it does. I think some of that is curved incorrectly. All right, so we have our little skeleton of a guest area. Obviously, we're going to go to facilities with the South America theme on, and we're just going to put a bunch of South America stuff right here. Obviously, we like to put benches. We need to put bins, because I will say it every time, guests are monsters. So sometimes you do have to turn it off to get the normal donation box. We'll put two of those right there. Guest education. Push that right up against the path there. Oh, uh huh. Go over here to giant ant eater. Oh, that looks so cool. I really like the way that looks. Now, since we're in Amba education, we'll put some ambiance speakers around as well, and we'll see what good jungle sounds we can find here. Rainforest, South American jungle. That actually seems pretty perfect for what we're looking for. Hold that on the ground. All right, <clears throat> now we're gonna put a nice trim with the new plants, obviously, because Dang, that just looks nice, and I'm, it's going to be these because, oh, I love these so much. These are my favorite new plants. These are my favorite flowers from the DLC pack for sure. All right, so we have most of the plants over here at the borders, but I do want to show you guys something that I think would be pretty useful if you're working on these zoos and you don't want to tediously place plants one by one. You hit the multi-select tool down here on the bottom right, then you hit the control key, one, two, three, four, and then you can either hit control D or the duplicate button. It's the same exact thing, and you can bring it over. So now you have another perfectly straight line. It's in the exact same orientation. We can hit the Z key. Oh, nope. We hit the Z key and we can rotate it, or we can keep it back to its original orientation. We can leave it, oh, we can leave it right there. There we go. That's another quick little tip for you guys. So, hear me out. What if we did an exhibit right here in the middle, and I show you guys how to make another fenceless habitat? I think that sounds like fun.